Hi, my name is Matthias and today we're going to talk about APIs in banking and specifically how APIs change the banking stack. So what you see here is a typical banking stack. It is consisting of the customer on top, then we have a channel to the customer and we have the banking product as the basis and the foundation of it. So there are just in a very simple way, three layers, product, channel and customer. The traditional banking stack that we see uh, consists of these three elements, but typically is actually only two elements. The customer, which is outside um, of the enterprise, or external to the bank, so to say, and then internal to the bank, the orange block is actually comprising two. Uh, the channel and the product are very tightly linked in a traditional banking stack inside the bank. Now, banks are introducing APIs, internal APIs. And what internal APIs do is that they kind of introduce a zipper in between the channel and the product. Internal APIs make it possible to separate the channel from the product. But this separation is not visible from the outside. It's still the internal channel and the internal product communicating with each other via an internal API. There is no external party involved and external parties cannot access the channel. They cannot access the product. External parties are only the customers and they reach the products only via the bank's channel. So internal APIs are just an internal reorganization or an internal cleanup activity, so to say. Now, when we introduce open banking, we have those internal APIs and open banking basically opens up the banking stack. So what happens is that you take the zipper and you kind of open it up a little bit. You open up the link between the channel and the product so that those two elements are now separate elements in a stack and they can be addressed separately from the outside. For example, the product, the basic product of the bank, may be an account or payment functionality, can now be accessible via another channel. So open banking, as I said, does not open the link between channel and product completely. It's, it's still a little bit stuck, this zipper. And it's stuck because you can't really um, have the banking product with typical open banking initiatives and APIs completely separated from the channel in the sense that the customer can just um, put any other channel on top of the product and never have to do anything with the bank's channel. That's not true. That's not possible right now. So if a customer wants to use open banking, he needs to first open up a bank account via the regular um, channels of the bank. So opening up the account, going through all the registration steps is really something that happens within the channel of the bank. And a real separation between channel and product is happening only with banking as a service, where you don't need to use the bank's own channel in order to open up a new product in order to open up a new um, account, for, for example. Everything, all the functionality is available via an API, and this is not only an internal API, but it is an external API, so it can be accessed from outside. And the complete life cycle of the underlying banking product can be controlled and steered from another channel that's not the bank's own channel. Okay. So now that we have the separation of the three components of the banking stack, and they're really separate, they are not just half linked as they are with open banking, we can now play with externalizing some of these components, right? And those are new uh, possibilities that we haven't had in that sense before. So there are many new configuration options. In orange, you see what the bank traditionally owns, and in black, you see what, uh, the, what is outside of 
the typical ownership of the bank. The customer is typically outside the bank, but the bank typically owns the channel, typically owns the banking product. Now, this is also the traditional configuration. If you have banking as a service, the bank does not own the channel anymore. It just has the product plus an API. So it's so to say a headless banking product and a fintech or another, um, another company can create their own channel on top of it. And that's how we get all of these long tail niche market tailored meaningful banking experiences that are popping up left and right. It's because of banking as a service. And there's a bank that only has a product plus an API, no channel. But there are other configuration options. For example, a bank can say, hey, we are just going to keep the channel and we're going to source the products, the banking products, or at least some of the banking products from other banks, from other players, right? It can also be that uh, maybe your banking product portfolio has, so to say, a gap or there is some product that you haven't offered so far. You can add this product to your product portfolio and sell it via your own channel. Fourth option is that the bank doesn't own channel, doesn't own product, but it owns kind of the middle layers. It owns the API, it owns the marketplace, brings together those players who have the product and those players who have the channel. Very interesting place. Um, maybe this is a place for a bank, maybe this is a place for some other player in the market. Now, what we see in banking is also to some extent happening in other industries as well, where they also have this separation between the channel and the underlying product. Right? So you have this pattern actually in other industries as well. And it's happening in the red industry, in the green industry, in the blue industry, and of course, in our orange banking industry. So what you will get here as a result of this opening up between channel and product, appification of all these underlying products is a set of building blocks representing those underlying business products, like Lego building blocks. And you have a lot of those all over the place, all over the industries. And you can now reassemble and recompose them. And it's just like Lego. So here is a quote from the CEO of Lego. Uh, and he says, well, it's a really simple idea with Lego. You can just recombine it. It all fits together and you can be endlessly creative in this system. And this is also what I think we will see in the future more and more, where different products from different industry will be available as this easily consumable building block. So startups and companies, incumbent companies as well, can build digital products so much more easily, just like assembling um, a Lego figure. And there will be lots of different Lego figures, um, as you can see here, because it's so easy to assemble them. And those that will be successful, I think, will, do, will be those that focus on specific customer needs and are able to focus on those customer needs better than others. So here's an example. If you um, create an app, you would create, uh, you would take all the infrastructure products from different industries and assemble them. For example, there is an email API, there is a maps API, a payment API, a location API. You get all of these instead of building them yourself. So that was a quick look at the banking stack, how it applies to banking, but also how this applies to the general tech stack that we see in other industries as well, how this stack is changing, how appification creates this really big box of Legos, these building blocks that we can now assemble and create really cool digital experiences with. I hope that was useful for you and insightful. My name is Matthias. This video has been sponsored by Software AG.